So, the story goes that one day an investment manager at Fidelity was going over his client book from 2003 to 2013. Flicking through, they noticed there was one particular category of investors who was doing much better than all the others. When they looked close to see what's happening to this group of the best investors to learn more, they realised that their secret was the one thing that jumped out. They'd either forgotten their account, or they were dead. This isn't a one-off. JP Morgan came out with annualised returns from 1996 to 2015. The S&P provided returns of 8.2% per year, a 60-40 portfolio of 7.2, the average investor 2.1. Morningstar came out with similar results in their 2014 report called Mind the Gap. And this is Peter Lynch. He's one of the most successful active managers of the last 50 years. He ran the Magellan Fund and from 1977 to 1990, the average annual return was 29%. The average investor in that fund lost money. So I'm sorry to tell you this, but the biggest risk to your investment is you. Now, just before you go smashing that dislike button and be like, screw you, finance guy, if you stick with me, I'm going to tell you why understanding and accepting this can unlock the easiest and best edge in the market. This is the behavioral edge. What's happening here that means the average investor is losing out? Well, Carl Richard in his book calls this the behavior gap. This is what the investment should have made compared to what the investor received due to the action they took. So how does this happen? Well, it's remarkably easy. It's not just about buying high or selling low. It's about changing the investments, moving to what's working now as opposed to having a long-term strategy. Personally, I believe most investors would be much better served understanding that investing is a discipline more than a skill. As Warren Buffett says, the biggest thing about money is time. You don't have to be particularly smart, you just have to be patient. Your investment is just a thing, and only you can reflect some human nature into it. So market drops don't tell you anything about a portfolio that you didn't already know. It may, however, tell you something about yourself and your reaction. This is a huge part of investing, and if you can develop a keen self-awareness, then you might be able to do better than most professionals out there. But this skill can't be taught by an MBA or qualification, it's a personal discipline. So why does the behavior gap exist in the first place? Well, we as humans have inbuilt biases which are very difficult to notice without help. This includes, but aren't limited to, things like loss aversion, the fact we feel losses more than our gains, the endowment effect, the fact that we tend to overvalue things we own, anchoring, the fact that we fix a value to what we paid more than perhaps what it's worth, and recency bias, that we consider what's happened recently as something that will always happen. These are only a few, but to be aware of, there are hundreds of them. Now, personally, I don't really like the idea of the label biases. I'm not saying they don't exist. I just don't think labels are actually that helpful. A bias, like an opinion, is a product of human experience. And, and guess what? We're all human. We're all human, so we're all affected by this. And I think it's better to view it that a personal viewpoint only shows part of the truth when making a decision. It's like the streetlight effect, which is the story of a policeman sees a drunk man searching for something under a streetlight, and he asks what the drunk's lost. And he says he's lost his keys, and they both look under the streetlight together. After a few minutes, the policeman asks if he's sure he lost them here, and the drunk replies no, and that I lost them in the park. The policeman asks why he's searching here, and the drunk replies, well, this is where the light is. So like the story of the person looking under the light for his keys is it's the only place they can see. We have to work hard to expand our field of view to ensure that we're uncovering enough information to make the right decision. But before I give out these tips, I want to say first, this element of investing discipline has nothing to do with intelligence. How do I know? Well, just ask yourself, am I brighter than Isaac Newton? Isaac Newton was one of the smartest minds of his day. Back in the spring of 1720, Sir Isaac Newton owned shares in the South Sea Company. Sensing that the market was getting out of hand, got rid of the South Sea shares, pocketing 100% profit. Just months later, swept up in the wild enthusiasm of the market, Newton jumped back in at a much higher price. He lost over three million in today's money. For the rest of his life, he forbade anyone to speak the words South Sea in his presence. This spawned the quote that Newton could calculate the motions of heavenly bodies, but not the madness of people. So think about this story in your journey. I, I do with my investments, I think it helps. If anything, it should hopefully provide a bit more humility about how easy it is to slip into potentially wealth damaging habits. So good is it knowing this? I mentioned earlier I was gonna give you ways to improve your behavioral edge and how you can take steps to make sure that you don't perform like the average investor. Now, of course, I'm gonna say the best way to do this is to find a planner who you can trust, have these conversations with, but with that self-interest you know, already put forward, here's a few tips on how you can develop your behavioral edge. Step one, be honest with yourself. Chances are you'll either feel losses more than gains or be overconfident. 
It's important to understand which emotions have a stronger power over you individually. The first step of awareness is that possibly your view may not reflect reality. It may well do, but if it's a big financial decision, it's always worth checking this. You can test your overconfidence when assessing a decision by asking, if I make this change and I'm right, what impact will it have on my life? What impact will it have if I'm wrong? Have I been wrong before? If it's a big decision, ideally your option to be able to test your theory with other people who won't just provide an echo chamber. It's only through working through this you'll be able to distinguish the quality of your own decisions. Step two, understand that there is no perfect investment. Remember the story at the start about Peter Lynch where despite the fund performing incredibly well, most investors didn't stick with it? Well, I think that's pretty accurate about the problem for constantly changing approach. A lot of times people end up switching their investments looking for the perfect investment when the reality is the magic of investing and compounding is in the time. A good investment process should be born out of simplicity, not complexity, and it should align to your goals. There can be rare occasions where complex arrangements work, but generally the simpler the better. Your future self will thank you. Step three, avoid the noise. Most forecasters are a complete waste of time and they're to garner eyeballs and have no interest in you or your family. Watch my episode on this topic and how difficult it can be to keep a long-term view. In today's world of constant media reporting and moving from one crisis to the next, it can be really easy to get swept up with it all. But just remember, these outlets are here to garner your attention and not act in your best interest. Avoid the noise. Step four, realize all financial decisions are just life decisions. There was a study done in America which showed that once earnings are over $75,000, the increase in happiness that any more income provided start to tail off significantly and flatline. This makes sense. Once we have our main needs looked after and feel secure, additional money doesn't add a lot to our overall well-being. So we have to realize that money is the tool, not the goal. Financial decisions almost always are life decisions. But before you decide on financial decisions, you need to choose your life goals. If you can orientate your investment plan to your life goal, you'll start to realize why constantly switching in and out of top performing funds makes no sense whatsoever. Instead of spending time searching for the best financial product, I think it's best to reflect on what's truly important to you. And of course, get a planner to help and make sure you understand this. But your capital and your values should ideally align. This isn't to say it's not important to maximize returns and all that, because it is. It's just to say when you change your positions from your investments to what you're investing for, it can be a lot easier to apply discipline, not only for now, but also your future self. So there are a few basic steps you can take to improve your behavior. However, like with any discipline, watching a few minutes of a video won't do. It's going to take practice. The thing is, this affects us all, and human nature will always be a feature of the markets. There's a great quote from Jim O'Shaughnessy, which is, arbitrage on human nature is the last sustainable edge in the market. I completely agree with this. In my view, the behavioral edge is an ability to combine discipline with self-awareness. In one of the next few episodes, I'm gonna be tackling the topic of making better decisions, which is the tagline for Principles Personal Finance. If you did like any of this content, it would be greatly appreciated if you could like or share it. I'll see you next week. Thank you.